Hi everyone, this is Celine from Blue Cala Patterns and this is the final video for the Coneflower crossbody bag. Um, at the end of the previous video, all I had left to do was the top stitching on my bag, which I've now done. And here I have a fabric version of the crossbody strap. Um, I don't know exactly how long I made it. Uh, I, I didn't really pay attention too much, but it is six inches wide um, and I've interfaced it on the wrong side. Now uh, when I'm interfacing straps that's when I tend to use all of my uh, interfacing scraps. I have a, always have a lot of scraps on hand so uh, you'll see it's actually in little pieces here and I didn't interface the very the shorter ends at both ends. Um, I left about half an inch uh, without interfacing because you're going to start by folding that, that part in towards the wrong side. So I've done that at both of these shorter ends. Then you're going to fold the strap in half, wrong sides together, and you're going to press it. And you, you do that along the entire length of the strap. I'm not going to, to show you that because that's kind of long and boring. Then open up the strap and you'll see you now have a crease in the center. Just fold in each half towards the center, wrong sides together again. And again, I'm not going to show you uh, how I do that along the entire length of the strap. I'm just going to show you a small portion so you get the basic idea. And then once that's done, you just fold it again once again along that original crease and then you'll end up with a strap that is one and a half inches wide by whatever length you you've prepared your strap and then you go over to your machine and you're going to sew all the way around your strap with one eighth of an inch seam allowance now if you want to do uh, two um, lines of stitching you can do that as well sometimes I do uh, all the way around with one eighth of an inch seam allowance and then I do it again a second time with three eighths of an inch seam allowance. So I'm going to finish pressing my strap and I'm going to go over to my machine and um, top stitch all the way around and then I'll show you how to attach it to your your slide and then your bag. I've just finished sewing my strap um, around all the edges. I didn't do a second line of stitching for this one. Um, and then what you'll do is you'll take your rectangle slide and you just pass one end of your strap uh, uh, along one side of the bar and then fold it over so that it's you're wrapping your strap around that middle slider, the, the middle bar of your slider. And then just fold it over onto itself. And then I use clips here because it's a bit thick for pins. And then I go over to my machine and what I'll usually do is I'll follow this original line of stitching and I sew a box of stitching and then I'll sew an X in the, in the middle. Okay, so I'm not sure if you can see this, but um, I did sew a box and then there's an X inside the box. Now to attach the strap to your bag, it's quite simple. So I consider this to be the underside of my strap. So I'll take the opposite end and I'll pass it through one rectangle ring. And you want to make sure that your strap isn't twisted. So make sure you have it like this and without, without a twist in it. And then slip this end again through the slide. Okay, and then again, making sure you're not twisting your strap, you're going to pass the same end around the rectangle ring on the other side, and use clips again. And it's a little bit awkward when you're sewing to the bag like this, so just take your time. And once again, um, I just sew the box of stitching with an X inside, and you're done. 
I did mention at the beginning of the video that I would be making my crossbody strap out of cork, not fabric. Um, I did just show you a fabric strap for those who choose that option, but if you'd like to make a cork strap, I already have a video that shows you how to make an adjustable strap. That strap, however, is to make a one inch wide strap, and for this bag, you're making a one and a half inch wide strap. So when you're cutting your strips, you wanna make sure that they are three inches by whatever length you've decided to use, and you're going to cut two separate pieces. Now, usually, it's recommended that you cut your cork strips for strap uh, parallel to the selvage. So that's your ends here. They kind of, they're a little bit thinner. I, uh, depending on the size of the bag that you're making and depending on your cork as well, um, I either follow this advice or I don't follow the advice. So I find the coneflower to be a medium sized uh, bag and as long as you're not carrying something really heavy like I don't know a brick um, I find cutting across the width of the fabric to be okay also I'm using uh, the dark gray cork which I find doesn't have as much stretch as say a natural cork let me see if I have it this here so I have some scraps here of the natural cork and I would definitely find this to be a thinner and a softer cork. So if I was making it in the natural cork for a larger bag, I would definitely cut parallel to the selvage. So you have to use your, your best judgment. Um, and I'm not going to show you the entire process of sewing the, uh, the, the adjustable strap and cork because as I said, uh, I've already covered that in video five of the Baronia Bowler series. The only difference with this strap is you're not attaching swivels. So once you have your strap with your rectangle slide, you follow the same steps that I've just shown you with the fabric strap to attach it to your completed bag.